Okay, I'm going to show you how I fasten these panels to my perimeter board. So if you look right here, what I use is a piece of plumber's tape. And I've taken a length of it, bent it in half, and placed a screw through. And that holds this in place. There's many different ways of doing it, but this seems to work really well for me and have some longevity. So I'll show you how I make one of these. And you want to hold it up off the ground a little bit so you can slip one in. So I use my boot like that. And it's not quite as painful as it looks. So let me show you that. So plumber's tape is this. It's just metal plumbing hangers that you can buy. I, I believe they call it plumber's tape. So what I found is the perfect length is four of these holes, basically. So one, two, three, four. Now there's several ways of doing this, but I usually put my thumb on the fifth hole like that and bend this up vertical all the way back and then forward, back, forward, and it snaps right off like that. Now what you'll do is you want this hole and that hole to line up. So you kind of eyeball the center. I stick my finger in there or you can stick your thumb, kind of give it a little pre-bend. And this one's a little bit, got a little bit of a flat spot in the bottom. So I'll take a pair of pliers and kind of crease it a little bit and bend it around like that. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now I will take one of my little screws. They don't call me monk, old monkey arm for nothing. All right, and then I'll move down. So I usually do above, I, I skip two. So I skip this one, skip this one, and I'll fasten it right here. So all you do is you just slip it through like that, place your screw in the one hole, line it up with the other hole, and then let the drill do the work. Now don't go crazy and ram it in there, there's not a lot of material here, but that goes in and it holds it sufficiently, so it's created a little saddle there. Little saddle that's holding around there and this this lasts quite a long time we've moved quite a few around like this and we're really happy with it so i'll continue to do that around the whole perimeter and that'll fasten everything in now one thing i would do is probably attach these two together before i get too carried away with those and i just use cable ties or zip zip ties for that so buy some good quality ones so they last they're easy to cut so you can reuse your stuff. We've tried using the reusable ones. They really don't last. They tend to break a lot and, and uh, they're not quite as good. So I do the same sort of thing. I'll fasten this bottom together right here so that they're about the same elevation, these two. So I'll just put it in loose. Okay, and then lift it so that they look pretty similar in elevation and crank it tight. And then I'll go to the opposite side and do the same thing. We want to lock in that bottom. And these line up good already, so I'm just gonna go ahead and fasten them. And then usually what I do is I go top dead center. Kind of make sure these line up a little bit. And then I'll lock it in, and that just kind of holds everything nice and uniform. This one here, I'll actually put two on across. Now, you can use a lot shorter ties in this. This is quite wasteful using long ones, but this is what we have at this point, and they're very good quality ties, so we'll uh, make do with them. So I cross those two alternating sides of the wire so it really makes it really strong. And then I'll just take every second one. I'll probably start here and then skip every second one and work my way down. So yeah, stick them in that holder. So now I want to show you how I do the door. Now I've made several of these and each design has been a little bit different and actually it's been improved on each time just because I kind of roll that way. But uh, so usually I have my two uprights for the door frame and then I put a header across like this. They go on the back like this, but it creates a bit of a low head height here, a little bit of a low head height. 
And so what I'm actually going to do this time is I am going to pass it through and it's going to sit just a little bit higher. It's going to sit on top of those two supports like that. So I'll have just a little better head height I'll round these edges off a little bit so it won't be tearing on the, uh, the tarp. So the first step is to establish these two uprights. You'll notice I left these boards long. I'll show you why in a minute. And you can see they're a little bit used. These are recycled boards from a previous chicken coop anyhow. So what you want to do first is you take your outside measurement, which is 8 feet, and you divide that in half, which is 4 feet. And that gives you your perfect center line of this side. And then you go up here and you kind of pick how wide you want your door to be. Now, I, I kind of go off these two bars here. I kind of, you know, that, that's a decent width. So I measure those from outside of the bar and outside of the bar, and that's 31 and a half inches. So I t go to my center line and I mark a line 15 and three quarters of an inch that way and 15 and three quarters of an inch this way. And that will equal 31 and a half inches. So that's how wide my door is going to be. Now, <clears throat> this this hoop coop can kind of move back and forth. So I need to establish plumb, a plumb line. So I know this is my 15 and three quarter inches. So I lift the board. I'll lift the board till it's flush and I'll place one screw to hold it down here. One screw. I stuck my hands underneath, lifted the board so it's flush with the bottom, and I've marked this edge of the board right there. Now what I do is I take a two-foot square and I place it along this edge of the board right here and slide it up. And then I look around this edge and I want that face of that board to be plumb with this two-foot square. So Right now we're just going to get it close and hold it with the screws and then when we put our brace on that will lock everything in and I'll show you how I do that. That screw I rejected. It had a little bend to it. So, let's see. Um, no. So I'll start my second screw so it's started and ready to go. I'll place my square back on here. I line it up with the bottom edge where the line meets. And then I grab this board and push it over until it's nice and flush with the edge of that square. Like that. And I hold it and try not to move a whole lot. And I take that, that screw home. Now those two screws will hold this relatively, relatively plumb up and down. And I'll show you how I will lock that all in in a minute. So we're going to repeat that on this side. When it comes to doors, you really want to try and keep everything nice and plumb and square. And that's how you, uh, that's how you make a door function proper, open and close and have longevity and strength. So it's just sitting just a little bit wide. That'll take care of that right there. So I'm 31 and a half is what I'm looking for. You'll notice I left these boards long. So I have another piece of scrap here. And I will place in here like this. So what I'll do here is this, the cattle panel kind of moves around a little bit. So what I'll do is I will place, I will get this corner looking nice and square with my square. And I'll hold this board tight to this bar, put one screw in it, lift it to square, put a screw in the other side, and then we'll check it from there. So the screw is started, I'll check once more with the square. Unscrew to hold it. One 
thing you don't want to do is bury your screws too deep. It's good just to have the head just slightly flush. If you pull it through too thick when you're dealing with thinner wood, sometimes you lose your strength. But the other thing is, is if you make a mistake, the reason I'm using screws is it's, it's a lot easier to repair what you've done wrong. And if you bury the head, sometimes they get in there so far, it's hard to get them back out. Or they won't grab the wood properly to back out. So it's always good to leave your screws just flush and not bury them. I still have a bad habit and sometimes I bury them, but I'm trying to work on that. It's always good to wear the appropriate safety gear when doing this. So this is a nice straight edge, so I'll use it as a guide to guide my saw blade. as a plunge cut there and then I will take my speed square and I'll mark where the top of this board is and like that now I'll trim that Now this I'll save, it'll be the perfect length for my bracing, right in here like that. Now I'll do, I'll find something similar for the other one. So at this point, we need to somehow fasten this hoop coop to this door frame. Because it's fastened at the bottom, but up here it's just tension holding it right now. And so there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, what I've done in the past, I've drilled a small hole here in here and placed a cable tie or a, a zap a zip tie to hold it into place and that's worked well but my headers have always been below here and i've only had these outside corners to attach to so i'm actually going to use two pieces of that plumber's tape like i did earlier and i'm going to attach here and attach here to this board so we will do that and the inspector just showed up They're enjoying a little freedom, a little free grazing time. So, I'll go find, right here I have another 1x4 set to the side here. And it's going to set my length, I'll make these two matching lengths. Now that's just a rough measuring. I'm going to be trimming these. So what I do at this point is I set my corner braces. So I take one. <laughs> what I do is I set one and I kind of take a high. I want it to be in about the center of this board, give or take. And I bring it down until the tip of the board matches right at the top there. And I can feel under here when the tip matches there. And then I trace that bevel onto there. And I trace the bevel onto this bottom edge right here. Now I have a matching set of bevels. Now I will cut that bevel. And then I'll make the other one match. And then I'll have two matching braces. gather a few screws first so I'm ready to attach this. And so I hold it back in place so I'm going to reach under here and feel with my fingers until it's flush with the bottom and I'm going to adjust the top to where I like it nice and flush with the face here on that and I'm going to place one screw in here. Some excess screw sticking through and when I'm all done I'll take take this pair of side cutters and I'll trim off any screws that stick through and are pokey so nobody gets anything cut, any cut. So at this point I'll hold the bottom and I adjust it. I want to make sure this bevel looks nice because that's what you'll see down here. If it's not quite perfect, nobody will ever see it. 
down in the dirt. So you make that, that bevel look really nice right there. Feels good. And I will place another screw down here.